Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Well... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's 420, and you know what that means. That's right, it's National Lima Bean Respect Day. That's right, the world's most respectable edible. Today's all about getting baked beans. Remember, you don't have to like lima beans today, but you damn sure better respect them. <laughs> you take off your hat when you eat that bean, mister. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you salute. <laughs> now, I'm serious. I'm really, really... As we always do on the solemn day, let's take a look at the official lima bean respect day timeline. <laughs> As you can see, in the 1500s, lima beans are discovered. Next major event, 2000s, National Lima Bean Respect Day. <laughs> just those two, just those two. They spent the 500 years in between getting shoved under the mashed potatoes. <laughs> now, for, the, for those of you uh, less respectful of the bean, 420 is also the unofficial holiday for marijuana. Now, okay. Time for all you doobie-loving potheads to get up to your usual smoky hijinks, <laughs> folding laundry and hoping half a gummy will help you fall asleep. <laughs> Party! <laughs> this year is a, is a big one for 420 because new polling shows 37% of Americans say they use weed, while the remaining 63% say they were just holding it for a friend. <laughs> and. The tide seems to be turning on legalization. Two-thirds of Americans want recreational marijuana use to be legal under federal law and in their own state. Now, if you smoke, obviously you want it to be legal, but even among those who say they never use marijuana, a majority favor legalization. Well, that makes sense. Marijuana is tame compared to other controlled substances. Its most dangerous side effect is making hacky sack seem like a sport. <laughs> now, legalizing marijuana could also help fight racism because black people are 264% more likely than white people to be arrested for cannabis possession, even though they use at similar rates, okay? That stat comes from a true authority on recreational marijuana, the Twitter feed of Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> You can trust, you can trust that information, because no one knows cannabis like the guys who invented fish food, Cherry Garcia, and Stephen Colbert's Americone Dream. Mm. Mm. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Mm. 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 My glaucoma is getting better already. <laughs> mm. All proceeds to charity. Of course. <laughs> the trippiest truth about marijuana is that even though it's legal in 37 states, recreational marijuana use remains illegal at the federal level because GOP lawmakers still oppose legalizing weed. Come on, Mitch McConnell. Don't be a square. <laughs> or whatever shape you are. <laughs> I want to say decorative gourd. <laughs> One. Yeah. Yeah. Back in there. there you go. Give me that <laughs> right there. There you go. Mm. 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 <laughs> My doctor says it's one of the best sources of, of waffle cone chunk. One bright spark in this week's news bowl is that New Jersey is about to begin adult recreational cannabis sales. That is exciting news. That is exciting news, but it means New Yorkers will have to do the unthinkable, drive to New Jersey on purpose. <laughs> the move is overwhelmingly supported by state residents who can now look forward to Jersey-specific strains like John Bong Jovi, <laughs> Bruce Springstrain, Joint Stewart and, of course, Stony Soprano's Ganja Ghoul. <laughs> the weirdest part... <laughs> weirdest part of the story is that Jersey will start sales tomorrow on 421, <laughs> the day after 420. What, are they high? 
That's not legal till tomorrow. <laughs> not everybody in the hydroponic garden state might get to enjoy the Mary Jane. Because at a press conference, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy said he's open to changing the rules to effectively bar police officers from getting high while they're off duty. It's all part of Governor Murphy's plan to defund the police. <laughs> but you got to be careful. Sure. Why not? I'm not sure if that was worth that. I'm not sure if that was worth that. You got to be careful you're getting cannabis uh, in the form of edibles because experts say copycat packaging of popular snacks could lead to dangerous mix-ups with your edibles. Take a look at one of these actual packages. Those aren't regular Doritos you eat when you're high. They're Doritos you eat when you want to get high. <laughs> and I can't believe they went with nacho cheese flavor and completely missed the obvious, are you cool, ranch? <laughs> Snack makers are not happy about this. One spokesperson for the National Confectioners Association, which is a real thing, said this, many cannabis edibles companies are overstepping on marketing in an egregious way. Careful. We've all seen what happens to people who piss off candy makers. <laughs> now, I need a cup of coffee. I need a... Now, not all the nugs are diggity dank, as the cool kids definitely say. <laughs> in fact, the folks at Vice News decided to look for the worst weed in the world, which is evidently a Paraguayan variety called Paraguayo. It's compacted into a brick to make it easier to smuggle, often mixed with marmalade to help it stick together and compact. Marmalade marijuana is, of course, the kind favored by Pottington Bear. <laughs> and... If jammy ganja wasn't gross enough, the gangs who press the bricks regularly leave the seeds inside, which release a urinish smell into the marijuana, which could be tough to explain. Matthew, are you smoking weed in there? No, Mom, it's fine. Uh, me and my buddies are peeing on each other. <laughs> it's for a school project. <laughs> Congress. Congress, this would be a great year to legalize cannabis nationally because I think we all need a little something to take the edge off. So far, this year, all edge. <laughs> For instance, we're almost eight weeks into Putin's attack on Ukraine. After a brief lull, Russia launched a massive assault on the eastern Donbass region that the Kremlin calls another phase of its Ukraine invasion. Oh, sure, just another phase Putin is going through. This year, it's war crimes. Last year, it was goth. <laughs> Since invading, Russia has taken heavy losses both militarily and economically, and reportedly, Kremlin insiders are now alarmed over the growing toll of Putin's war in Ukraine. Careful. Kremlin insiders have a way of becoming Kremlin outsiders, especially if they're sitting near a window. <laughs> now, to avoid hearing from a bunch of Dmitry Downers, Putin has isolated himself further, relying on a narrowing circle of hardline advisors. Only the most feared and despised remain around Putin's giant table. Joseph Stalin's mustache, the guy who killed John Wick's dog, Shake from Love is Blind, Bridgerton's Lord Featherington, the My Pillow guy, but of course, Putin's cruelest advisor is Potato. <laughs> Speaking long walk. Long walk. <laughs> I'm walking. Yes, indeed. I'm walking. Speaking of couch potatoes, Netflix, today, their stock price dropped over 35% after they announced they had lost 200,000 subscribers. That's a lot. Explains why they've changed their pop-up message from, are you still watching, to, come back, please, I can change. Do you want DVDs again? <laughs> Netflix is blaming the loss of subscribers on a combination of factors like the growth of competitive services. Yeah, they're not the only game in town anymore. It used to just be, you know, Netflix and chill. Now you can HBO Max and relax. <laughs> Hulu and woohoo. <laughs> and Peacock. <laughs> Netflix, Netflix used to, used to go, uh, really? Really? I'm surprised. Slightly surprised. Netflix used to be the go-to spot for big TV and film, but now other streamers have taken back 
a lot of stuff that used to run on Netflix and put it on their own services. Yeah, like Star Trek. That used to be on Netflix. Now it's exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Paramount+, Plus, a mountain of reruns we never thought you'd pay for. <laughs> Netflix is also blaming the subscriber slowdown on password sharing and vowing to crack down. What? Absolutely not. You have the legal right to use your ex-girlfriend's password until she gets married. Then you return it to her as a wedding gift. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Alexander Skarsgård and musician Jack White. And when we come back, the happiest place on earth is sad. Thanks to Ron Sanders. Stick around, friends.